Glory to God. Hallelujah. You're welcome to this session, and we want to pray before we start. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness and your gr grace upon our lives. And as we gather before your throne of grace, Father, we thank you that we shall be changed. For you said we should come and we will be helped by your grace. So we believe that we are living today from, your, from this place with much more grace upon our lives. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your hand at work in our lives. We thank you for your blessings. And we give you the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we want to go straight to the word. You are welcome. And today we want to share uh, out of Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. Uh, God has made us something that is so wonderful that is called here in this passage, partakers. We are partakers of the divine inher inheritance. So we read, giving thanks. So this is, this is what Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Ghost, is saying that we should always be giving thanks into the Father. If we understand what he has done, for us, we should be always giving thanks to him. He said, giving thanks into the Father, into the Father, which has made us. So God has already made a great work. He has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. We know according to Romans chapter 8, verse 30, according to Romans 8, 30, we know that God want us to be glorified. That's the end of all. He want us to be glorified. And in Romans chapter 8 verse verse 30 3 0, he said this. He said for if ye be 33 thir moreover whom he did per predestinate which is us, them he also called, he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Glorified. So, so the heart of God for, toward us is that we may enter glory. He wants us to, to, to be glorified. You remember Jesus said, Father, bless me with the glory that you, I had with you before the world was. So he's, one, he's taking us into that glory. God is so wonderful. God is so excellent. God is so good that out of his goodness and mercies and grace, he has reserved us for his glory. Wonderful. So that's the end result. This is our destiny. Glory to God. So now, um, before we enter that glory, before we are glorified, God has made a kind of preparation work. He has worked so wonderfully. And we want to look at that preparation work that God has done. And we said, God, it's clear that the Three persons of the Godhead are completely involved in that work of, of, of preparing us for eternal glory. The Father is involved, the Holy Ghost, the Son is involved, the Holy Ghost is involved. So the, but the three persons, each one has a specific work to be done. But the same goal is the same purpose toward the same end, salvation, full salvation, taking us into his glory. That's what God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are doing. And they are doing that in unity. And that unity should inspire the church. The church should be working in that same unity that 
Jesus has prayed for in John chapter 17. But today we want to uh, move into that understanding of being the partakers of the divine nature. But we should already say that those, all those who are destined, designed for heaven, those who are designed for heaven, they are in preparation now. Because after we leave the earth, there is no way to be prepared. Preparation is now. So that's why it's very important. There's no possibility to be uh, saved after we left the earth. So that salvation that includes that eternal destiny in, in God, in the glory, is in preparation. Those who are to benefit of it, who are benefiting in it, of it, are prepared for heaven now. And we want to look at what the Father is doing or has done. And then we look at what the Son has done. And we look at what the Holy Ghost has done as far as the preparation to take us into that glory. Are you ready for that? Uh, we may have to deal only with the part of the Father today. And we'll see you what will happen after. So, in Colossians, as we just read, 1.12, we read that the Father has made us, he has made us meet. Colossians, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet. The Father has made us meet. He has made us uh, fit. He has made us, uh, um, uh, as we ought to be, in order to partake. He has made us meet. That's what the Father has done. To be partakers, he has made us meet. Hallelujah. Just a parenthesis to say that there is no way we can make, us make ourselves meet. There is no way. That's the work of God. And that's the Father who is doing that out of his grace and mercies. That's, that's the full grace here. He has the chosen to make us meet to be particulars. So we want to look at uh, three points. Through whom, through whom the Father has made us meet. The first point is that the Father has called us out of his grace. He has called us out of darkness. He has called us out of darkness. In 1 Peter 2, verse 9, 1 Peter 2, verse 9, we can see that the Father has called us out of darkness. Let's look at that here. But ye are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar people, that ye should show forth his, the praises of him who has called us, called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we see here that there is a call of the Father, a call the Father wants us out He's calling. He's calling. But who will answer the call? Who will hear the call? God's heart is still calling. Even today, he's calling multitude to come out from darkness, out of darkness. He's calling. His heart is calling. He's, 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 he's longing that his people, his children, his, those that he has created will come to him, will come out from darkness. We see that. So the first thing God did is to call his people out of darkness 
into first out of darkness into his marvelous light so darkness opposed to light who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light so we have to understand that the whole world like first john 5 verse 19 said the whole world dwelleth in darkness the whole world dwell lay in darkness but god has called he has so loved the world the people in the world out of darkness and now taking us into his marvelous light hallelujah and we know that that darkness signify the slavery of satan is satan who is ruling having dominion in this darkness over the lives of multitude of souls and god want this multitude to be out of this dominion of the devil and be in the marvelous light of the son of god god has something for his people and he's calling the people may multitude of souls around the world hear the voice of the father the voice that are calling out of darkness into the marvelous light that's the first thing god did in order to prepare uh, his people to come into glory the second thing that god did he did three things the second thing is god has destined destined we have a destiny i'm not talking about destination he said destiny will understand to be conformed to the image of the son i like it so much so while we are called out into the mirror's light there is a process of transformation in which god is and is taking us through in that pro process of transformation according to roman 8 verse 29 Romans 8 29 God is transforming us into that uh, into, through that process is transforming us more and more to be conformed to the image of his son I like it so much how can you imagine becoming like Jesus that idea is so wonderful in my heart becoming like the very son of God our Lord and Savior who is shining the light the glory is the express image of god hallelujah and this is what god has reserved for us that's our destiny that's more that's more than anything else to be conformed to christ i want sometimes wonder how how god looking at us as sinners have in his mind had in his mind this is what i will do for them i will just make them like my son jesus oh this is uh, can we praise the lord can we say thank you jesus can we say you are wonderful thank you father for what you have reserved for me in this process as you are taking us out of darkness uh, with the destination of the glory we have been transformed to become more, more and more like Jesus wonderful so that process of transformation is very very uh, capital that's the center that's the that the that the axis the direction the fundamental direction that every Christian must take that's Christianity being conformed more and more to the image of Christ I always pray for that no day the sun will arise and we should not be pray, praying for this that this is the perfect will of god for us not just for things down here but to be transformed 
to become conformed to the image of Christ. Wonderful. Excellent. I say, Father, I love you. And I thank you. I honor your name. I bless you, Father. Hallelujah. That rejoiced my heart more than anything else. And uh, also, thinking about using us while we are still in the process of being transformed, using us more and more to affect other people, other lives, other souls, to enter into this process, to answer the call, and be engaged into that transformation process with uh, the destiny of the glory. Using us for that. Hallelujah. Giving us the privilege to be part of it. Of the eternal destiny of so multitude of souls. That's in terms of uh, working. That's the most high for me. And I believe in the Bible. And that's why Jesus came. That's the most important thing that we can do on earth. Hallelujah. So that's the first thing, the second thing that God did. And now the third one that God did to make us partakers is uh, that I have four points to show that that partaking, partaking to that inner return, I want to break it down in four aspects that God is doing now. The first aspect that God is doing and has done in our lives and continue to do is that he has sanctified our soul. Our soul have, 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 had been messed up, but God has sanctified it. He has made us sense. We are not sent to after our death. You see, those who are not sent on earth cannot be sent in heaven. Once we are out of here, there is no sainthood anymore. It's not possible to be sanctified. You see, the thing is this. Those who are not sanctified on earth who are not saints in Christ. They leave the earth with hell. Leaving the earth, not being in Christ, leaving the earth means they are leaving, their soul is already in hell as they are leaving the earth. They live with their hell as they are leaving the earth already because they are not in Christ. So there is no other transformation as they are leaving and after they left. So all those that will know the eternal glory, they are sense why they are still on earth. And as they are leaving the earth, they leave already the earth with heaven. They are living with heaven. They are not living with he hell. Hallelujah. So that's the first thing. So God has sanctified our souls. Our souls have been sanctified and we have been made saints. We can see that Jesus speaking to, uh, uh, speaking about uh, giving instruction to Saul who became Paul. In Acts chapter 26, verse 18. Acts chapter 26, verse 18. Jesus speaking to Saul who became Paul, who met him, Jesus said that he's sending him, he's sending Paul, Apostle Paul, to open the eyes of the people, the Gentiles, and to turn them from darkness to light. From darkness to light. This is what God said he's, delivered, he's calling us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And from the power of Satan, you see, Darkness means the dominion of Satan. That's uh, the meaning of Satan, of, of darkness. So Jesus is sending Apostle Paul to turn the multitude from the power of Satan unto God. Die that they may receive 
once they come out from the power of Satan, they are receiving forgiveness of sin. And inheritance, you see that? Inheritance among them which are sanctified, sanctified by faith that is in Christ, that is in him. Faith in Christ is what makes us sanctify. Faith, the faith, as long as you have faith in Jesus, you believe him and what he has done, you are sanctified. We are sanctified by faith in Christ. Hallelujah. So Jesus sent Apostle Paul to go and do that. So the saints are those who are sanctified by faith that is in Christ. Hallelujah. So we see here that the first thing God did to make us partakers after he has called us and destined us to be conformed to his son, the process of preparation, we have been sanctified, our souls are sanctified, uh, and we receive the we receive the working, the work of uh, uh, redemption in our heart. The work of redemption in our heart causes us to be sanctified. And as we, uh, how to receive that is by faith in Jesus. So, first thing, send, sanctify, sanctified soul. The second thing that the Father did is that he, these saints are already in light. No matter how dark is the earth, the world, those who are sanctified, meaning they are not anymore under the dominion. Sin has no dominion over them. In their heart, the, 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 the works of the redemption, the blood, has purged them. They receive forgiveness of sin. The devil has no dominion over them anymore. These are those who are in the light. They are not anymore in darkness, but they are in the light. Hallelujah. In the light in the sense that they have communion. Not only they are purged, they are purified, they are sanctified, but also they have communion. We have communion with the Father, who is the Father of light. Who is light? The Father is light. The Father himself, God is light. And the Bible said in uh, in First John, in uh, in James 1.17 and John 1, 5, the Father is light and is the Father of all lights. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And in first John in John chapter 1, verse 5. The Father himself is light. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended not. Comprehended not. And uh, it says in from the, the same chapter, John 1, from verse, uh, verse 3, 3 and 4, John 1, verse 3 and 4, he said that in him was light. And the light is the life of man. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of man. The light of man. God's life is light. God is light. The divine nature of God is light. Hallelujah. So we see that here, that not only our souls are sanctified, but we are transferred, we are in the light already, by virtue of the fact that the one who dwelt in us is light, his nature is light. That causes us to be light. And uh, there is no more dominion of, the, of sin, no more dominion of the devil, the slavery of the devil, all these that characterize darkness is no, no more. Hallelujah. That's the, that's the second thing that God is doing and has done 
in us in order to prepare us for the eternal glory. And the third one is not only as a sanctify our soul, may transform us to be light, but also he has made us his heir. We have become heir. Galatians 3, Galatians 3, verse 26 and 29, and Romans 8, verse 17, Galatians 3, verse 26, 29, and Romans 8, verse 17, we can see that Romans 8, verse 17, we see that uh, he said, and if children, then heirs. If children, then we are heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So if children, we become heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. Wonderful, wonderful. Excellent Father of glory, hallelujah, who has not left, up, left us out, but in Christ Jesus we become joint heir of Christ, of his only begotten son who has pleased him. We become joint heir with him, and we are heir of God. So he has made us heir, and that gives us the, the right to have an inheritance, and that inheritance is is what we have in Romans 8, verse 30. We already quoted that verse where he said, whom he has predestinated, he are also, uh, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, them he also called to be conformed to the image of the Son of God. He also called, them, he also justified, and whom he justified, he also glorified. So this is our destiny, glorify in Christ, glorify in Christ. That's our destiny, to be like him, glorify in Christ. So we see the four things, not only that preparation is, uh, is partaking to his inheritance, he is he is making us sanctify soul. He is making us, after he sanctify, he taking us to light. We are becoming light. We are becoming light, which is his nature. And also, we are becoming heir of God, heirs of God, and joining heir with Christ. And that inheritance is the most excellent that can be in God, is his, his own glory. He's making us enter that glory. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We give you all the glory and the honor. We thank you for your word shall not return to you void. We appreciate what you are doing, O oh God. We give you glory for Jesus and for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the, uh, your goodness to us, Lord. But by your own decision, out of your heart of love for us, you have decided to make us conform to the image of your son and so that we will dwell together in glory one day. So we bless you, Father, for that. We honor you and give you the praise for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we invite those who want to give their life to Christ. Just pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you die on the cross for me. You shed your blood for me. And today I repent of all my sins and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving my soul and making me a child of God, born again. Thank you, Jesus. And from this day, I want to know you more and to serve you and honor you. Thank you for so doing. In Jesus' name we pray. And we ask you to continue to come to the mountain of prayer. This is one thing that the Lord has established by his Spirit on the earth. And this is a place where his heart is. He has shown us his heart is inside of the mountain. That's one of the vision that we, we got. And since two years now, we are going to the third years very soon, in, uh, in, uh, in a week time, we are going into beginning the third years of nonstop 
praying for souls, praying for the nations, praying for the kingdom of God to come, for Jesus to be revealed, for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, praying for the revival of the church. Hallelujah. And the empowering to preach the gospel without compromising, but with demonstration. So, Father, we thank you for what you are doing, O oh God, through the mountain of prayer. We pray that more watchmen from all the nations, 205, now we are about 115 nations gathering at the mountain of prayer, praying continually. And we believe that all the nations, the watchmen from all the nations, will be connecting, coming to the mountain. For this is you who are at work. Nothing can hinder you. And we give you glory in advance because you have even finished before you start with us. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The people of God say, Amen. God bless you, keep you, cause his face to shine upon you, and be gracious unto you in Jesus' name. Bless you.